Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm going to share with you a technique to hand stitch 360 video using basic After Effects plugins. I'm going to preface this by saying that this solution isn't perfect and if you're looking for a perfect solution, definitely consider buying professional stitching software. But um, this method is free and it's mostly intended for people who are just getting into VR video and um, it's also for people who don't have stitching on other computers and they want to just quickly prototype um, something in the field, quick and dirty, to just get an idea of what their um, VR 360 footage looks like. Here's a screenshot of you know, a frame of the composition or the 360 video. So what does it actually look like? Um, so here's a video that was generated by this technique. Um, and here's it playing on YouTube. And you can notice that there are some artifacts at the seams, but you can indeed look around 360. And, um, yeah. So, there is a hole at the bottom, and there is a hole at the top, just because I don't have cameras um, pointed in that direction. For those of you who just want to go straight to the technique, I'm going to put a timestamp here for you to jump to that. But do be aware that this technique kind of depends on a certain camera setup. So I'm going to talk about that real quick. So here's the camera that I use to shoot this video. Um, so basically the main thing that you want is whether you're using six cameras, four cameras, two cameras, 12 cameras, um, is you just want them oriented in a flat plane all facing outwards um, so no tilt either so they're just facing straight outwards no tilt up or down um, you can adapt this so that it will work with tilt but that's a little more complicated and I'm just going to show you the simplest way to do this if you're interested in this camera this is actually a 3d printable mount and I've this is actually my github page which I'll link which has a bunch of other stuff about the technique as well so how is this going to work? Well, assuming that you shot your video using however many cameras you're, you have, um, we're going to start with kind of an empty composition that's larger than um, all of our video uh, streams combined. Um, this is not going to be the final output size, and this is just for putting things together. So we'll have another step for outputting to like 4K or 2K or some standard resolution. So what we do is we basically just bring in all of the video tracks that we shoot with all of our cameras, whether it's on a rig or something else. So once we've got them in, um, we basically want to orient them in a way that kind of you know stitches them together. So we want to line these up so that they all are playing at the same time. Um, you can sync your tracks basically by, I don't know, having all your cameras record and then you know making a clap sound and then using that to kind of sync them up in time so once they're synced up in time we're actually going to start with one of the video tracks just for simplicity so here we've got a video track um, and what we want to do is we want to start warping it so if we go here we type warp and there are several warps that we can use um, we're just going to go with the simplest way and we're going to use just a regular warp and notice that the default setting gives you this crazy look and that's not what we want. Um, what we actually want is um, in the effects panel in warp style we want to click the drop down and we want to go down to squeeze and then we get that and then for the warp axis we want vertical so we kind of get this dumbbell looking thing and um, that's exactly what we want. Um, notice here there's also a bend parameter, which if you slide it, you can get different, you know, like extreme, you can get like extreme bend or you can get like a extreme, extreme squash or something. So basically this is the param only parameter that you're gonna need to change based on the number of cameras on your rig and the field of view of each of your cameras. Um, Particularly for my project with six cameras and the SJ4000 um, action cameras, um, my bend level is at 30. So 
we've bent this track and that's literally all we have to do to it so we can drop in a second um, camera feed and this is actually the camera that's right next to the camera that we just bent so we do that and we basically just take the same warp copy it and paste it over and if you notice if we just kind of like put this up to this other camera feed we're actually getting some pretty good um, blending going on with barely doing anything and you can kind of see that this is starting to get that bendy effect that you see in other 360 videos um, to kind of make this slightly better we're, we can draw a mask over the overlaying layer right and then it's gonna take the same outline as the bend or the warped uh, layer and then we're just gonna feather it um, so if you have camera feeds that are more that have more overlap um, or you just have more cameras you can bend or you can feather more but for me I have just the bare minimum and uh, this is kind of pushing it so we just get it to kind of feather out a little bit and uh, we get something that kind of looks like this so yeah so that's putting two uh, adjacent or next to each other um, video frames together and then we kind of just keep iterating through this process we drop in a new layer and uh, we copy over the warp we apply the same warp and this track is actually rather you know not consistent with exposure so we can go over here and pull in a curves and um, we can kind of approximate you know the same kind of warpage going on and then we also apply a mask to this and then we also do a feather some value And then we kind of just slide it over. So it's not perfect for sure because here you've got like some bad warping. And it's mainly due because like this building is so high up. Um, some optical effect. But for the most part, everything here looks pretty straight. Um, so once we've got all the tracks kind of laid out and warped and blended, we get something like this. Um, so we have six video feeds and six tracks. Um, the only additional thing we need to do is we need to take one of these edge tracks and then just make a copy of it and then throw it on the other side. So for this case, I take this um, track number four and I make a copy and you can notice that it's over here now on the left side. And the reason why we need to do this um, or have a copy of a video on both sides of our composition is because this is going to basically help us wrap the video track together to make the 360 look. It kind of connects the ends of the videos. So we'll see that in the next step. So once we've got that down, um, now we create a new composition that's actually the resolution of what we want to output. So for this case, I'm using a 4K resolution, which is 3840 by 2160. And then this composition that we just did, comp one, I want to drop it into this new composition, which is going to be our final output. So we've got something like this going on. And basically, if your aspect ratio for your scale parameter is um, locked, you're, you're going to want to unlock it. And then you're going to want to mess with these scalings um, until you get something correct. So notice here that at the very left of this um, layer, or the composition that we just made, this traffic sign has its edge all the way on the left side. And if you go all the way over here, the same tr copy of the traffic sign, we want this left edge to be at the right edge of the video frame. So for me, that uh, value is 74.2 here. So if you notice, 
traffic sign is on the left edge and the traffic sign is actually on the left edge here if we just kind of shift it over so that's kind of what pulls everything together at the seam and wraps everything around For, depending on what you're shooting you're going to want something like that that's distinguishable and you generally want this edge wrap around to happen in the middle of an actual video track just so you don't do any additional stitching um, so each of these video tracks has this kind of bulging rounded effect at the top and the bottom and usually um, when, once you wrap that once you put that into like a 360 viewer those actually get transformed into like straight lines so actually if we just left it as is right now and we loaded it back into YouTube 360 we would look up and we'd actually see a black hexagon so just to make things slightly nicer um, we use uh, you just you can just add f flat you know letterbox cropping bars and that will get transformed into a circle if you look straight up which is what we have in the demo I showed earlier um, yeah so that kind of basically sums up the general method um, you can imagine what different types of warps you could do um, if, your ang if your cameras are at different angles. So basically if you have some tilt in your camera, you can actually imagine how you would do this. Um, there's actually this thing called a Bezier warp that you can use. So the layer on the right here, if your camera's tilted up, there's going to be more um, warping near the top because, or it's going to be wider since it's tilted tilted up um, and it's gonna be a little skinnier at the bottom and if the cameras are pointed straight out they're gonna have the same amount of warp or wideness at the top and the bottom so yeah all right so that pretty much wraps it up for that stitching method um, um, definitely feel free to kind of adapt different warps to whatever camera mounts you're using if you're doing something at the top and bottom I haven't exactly messed around with that too much, but I'd imagine there's a special warp for that. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in building your own virtual reality camera, um, I actually built this one using about five, six hundred dollars, um, and I've kind of documented it on my GitHub project that I'll include. Um, so if you want to try it out, all you need is a 3D printer which if you don't have one, you can. there are probably local 3D printing centers um, nearby where you live. And just a bunch of off-the-shelf cameras. Um, specifically what I have are the SJ4000s and I had access to a 3D printer. So this all ran me about 500-ish dollars. And if you wanted to do this as well, it'd probably cost about the same. Um, so I've also included .scad files, which are generator files for different 3D um, printer mounts. So inside, um, there are different parameters that you can use to, yeah, actually. So here, there's here's the 3D model for the mount. And inside are different parameters. So you can kind of adjust these to fit whatever cameras that you have, like GoPros or whatnot. So I just kind of shrank the the width of the camera trenches or the holders I can set it back and um, likewise here you can take off five millimeters and shrink it that way and then you can also make these trenches a bit shallower um, it's really up to you whatever camera you're using uh, feel free to adapt this uh, mount to do it if you want yeah so if you want to also add more cameras to this basically what you need to do is just kind of um, increase the distance to this center and then you just need to make um, each of these kind of defines one of these trenches and you just need to copy that and rotate it like a few times if you have any questions just ask feel free to ask me but yeah so there's a bunch of stuff about the technique as well on this github page um, as well as the demo so so that kind of wraps everything up um, thanks for checking out my video on hand stitching 360 video I um, hope that helps a lot I mean it wasn't intuitive for me 
at first when I wanted to do VR video and how do you like generate, how do you warp stuff. So I hope that's helpful. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message um, or email me. I'd be glad to help. And um, if you have any questions about creating anything on my GitHub about creating new uh, 3D camera mounts or how to print stuff, um, feel free to send me a question on that or anything. Thanks, guys.